readers, we are back again to continue on with our read aloud, so let's get started. We are reading The City of Ember, and we are currently at chapter 7. I just wanted to jump back to the end of chapter 6, though, to um, review what we had read last, and that was when Lena had gotten home, her gran uh, granny was searching through a closet again, and Lena found that interesting box and then found a bunch of scraps of paper all over the floor and in Poppy's mouth and hands. And that is where it ended with her looking at that small, perfect printing on those scraps of paper. So let's start now with Chapter 7, A Message Full of Holes. It was the printing that sparked Lena's curiosity. It was not handwriting, or if it was... It was the neatest, most regular handwriting she had ever seen. It was more like the letters printed on cans of food or along the sides of pencils. Something other than a hand had written those words. A machine of some kind. This was the writing of the builders. And so this piece of paper must have come from the builders too. Lena gathered up the scraps of paper from the floor and gently pried open Poppy's fists and mouth to extract the crumpled wads. She put all this into the dented box and carried it to her room. That evening, Granny and the baby were both asleep by a little after eight. Lena had nearly an hour to examine her discovery. She took the scraps from the box and spread them out on the table in her bedroom. The paper was thick. At each torn edge was a fringe of tangled fibers. There were many little pieces and one big piece with so many holes that it was like lace. The chewed bits were beyond saving. They were almost a paste. But Lena spread out the big lacy piece and saw that on one edge of it, which was still intact, was a column of numbers. She collected all the dry scraps and puzzled over them for a long time, trying to figure out where they fit into the larger piece. When she had arranged them as well as she could, this was what she, she had. All right, learners, so if you see, this is kind of what Lena has pieced together. It's not very easy to read because there's a bunch of missing parts, but you'll see up at the top, um, it looks like maybe the beginning of the word instructions. Um, I see something that might say this office, uh, period of prepare, maybe preparations made for the word city. And then you'll notice here is that column of numbers like Lena had stated. But again, it's kind of hard to read. So if you want to pause the video at this point and just kind of check it out and see if there's anything you can make out of this mysterious writing, you're welcome to try to figure that out. All right, let's continue on. Lena could make sense of only a few words here and there. Even so, something about this tattered document was exciting. It was not like anything Lena had ever seen. She stared at the very first word at the top of the page, instra, and she suddenly knew what it must be. She'd seen it often enough at school. It had to be the beginning of instructions. Her heart began knocking at her chest like a fist at a door. She had found something. She had found something strange and important. Instructions for something. But for what? And how terrible that Poppy had found it first and ruined it. It occurred to Lena that this might be what her grandmother had been talking about for so long. Perhaps this was the thing that was lost. But of course, not knowing what had been lost, Granny wouldn't have recognized the box when she saw it. She would have tossed it out of the closet just as carelessly as she tossed everything else. Anyhow, it didn't matter whether this was the thing or not the thing. It was a mystery in itself, whatever it was and Lena was determined to solve it. The first step was to stick the scraps of paper down. They were so light that a breath could scatter them. She had a little bit of glue left in an old bottle. Painstakingly, 
She put a dot of glue on each of the scraps and pressed each onto each one into its place on one of her precious few remaining whole sheets of paper. She put another piece of paper on top of this and set the box on top to flatten everything down. Just as she finished, the lights went out. She'd forgotten to keep an eye on the clock on her window sill. She had to undress and get in bed in the dark. She was too excited to sleep much that night. Her mind whirled around, trying to think what the message she'd found might be. She felt sure it had something to do with saving the city. What if these instructions were for fixing the electricity? Or for making a movable light? That would change everything. When the lights went on in the morning, she had a few minutes before Poppy wakened to work at the puzzle. But there were so many words missing. How could she ever make sense of such a jumble? As she pulled on her red jacket and tied the frayed and knotted laces of her shoes, she thought about it. If the paper was important, she shouldn't keep it to herself. But who could she tell? Maybe the messenger captain. She would know about things like official documents. Captain Fleary, Lena said when she got to work, would you have time to come home with me later on today? Just for a minute. I found something I'd like to show you. Found what? asked Captain Fleary. Some paper with writing on it. I think it might be important. Captain Fleary raised her skinny eyebrows. What do you mean, important? Well, I'm not sure. Maybe it isn't. But would you look at it anyway? So that evening, evening, Captain Fleary came home with Lena and peered at the bits of paper. She bent down and inspected the writing. Fall, she said. Axe, rem, aunt. What kind of words are those? I don't know, said Lena. The words are all broken up because Poppy chewed on them. I see, said Captain Fleary. She poked at the paper. This looks like instructions for something, she said. A recipe, I suppose? Small steel pan. That would be what you used to cook it with. But who would have such small, perfect writing? That's the way they wrote in the old days, said Captain Fleary. It could be a very old recipe. But then why would it have been kept in this beautiful box? She showed the box to Captain Fleary. I think it was locked up in here for some reason, and you wouldn't lock up something unless it was important. But Captain Fleary didn't seem to have heard her. Or, she said, it could be a school exercise, someone's homework that never got turned in. But have you ever seen paper like this? Doesn't it look as if it came from someplace else? Not here? Captain Fleary straightened up. A look of puzzlement came over her face. There is nowhere but here, she said. She put both her hands on Lena's shoulders. You, my dear, are letting your imagination run away with you. Are you overtired, Lena? Are you anxious? I could put you on short days for a while. No, said Lena. I'm fine. I am. But I don't know what to do about... She gestured toward the paper. Never mind, said Captain Fleary. Don't think about it. Throw it away. You're worrying too much. I know, I know we all are. There's so much to worry about, but we mustn't let it unsettle us. She gave Lena a long look. Her eyes were the color of dishwater. Help is coming, she said. Help? Yes coming to save us. Who is? Captain Fleary bent down and lowered her voice, as if telling a secret. Who built our city, dear? The builders, said Lena. That's right, and the builders will come again and show us the way. They will? Very soon, said Captain Fleary. How do you know? Captain Fleary straightened up again and clapped a hand over her heart. I know it here, 
she said, and I have seen it in a dream. So have all of us, all the believers. So that's what they believe, Lena thought, and Captain Fleary is one of them. She wondered how the captain could feel so sure about it, just because she'd seen it in a dream. Maybe it was the same for her as the sparkling city was for Lena. She wanted it to be true. The captain's face lit up. I know what you must do, dear. Come to one of our meetings. It would lift your heart. We sing. Oh, said Lena, thank you, but I'm not sure I... Maybe sometime. She tried to be polite, but she knew she wouldn't go. She didn't want to stand around waiting for the builders. She had other things to do. Captain Fleary patted her arm. No pressure, dear, she said. If you change your mind, let me know. But take my advice. Forget about your little puzzle project. Lie down and take a nap. Clears the mind. Her narrow face beamed kindness down at Lena. You take tomorrow off, she said. She raised a hand goodbye and went down the stairs. Lena took advantage of her day off to go to the supply depot to see Lizzie Bisco. Lizzie was quick and smart. She might have some good ideas. Okay, readers, that is actually where we are going to end for today. So make sure that you go into Canvas to answer the discussion question, and we will continue with this chapter tomorrow.